Hi, I'm Brenda Gunter. Today I'm presenting information about my internship experience in the Professional and Technical Communication Program at the University of North Texas. I'm working in a Communication Management Internship at the University of Texas MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston, Texas. I'm a lifelong learner and I'm working toward my second master's degree at UNT. I earned a Bachelor of Arts in English with an emphasis in writing from Sam Houston State University. It was there that technical writing first piqued my interest. I worked full-time as a journalist all the way through college to finance my education. About the time I graduated, newspapers were transitioning to desktop publishing and pagination. I learned Quark Express and the Adobe programs on the job. In 2002, I returned to college to get a more formal grounding in the programs I'd learned. I got training at Houston Community College just as Adobe InDesign was starting to overtake Quark as the primary desktop publishing program. In 2009, I decided to work toward a Master in Library and Information Science at UNT. My studies focused on health informatics and using electronic databases. I had also been interested in studying rhetoric and composition in more depth. In 2021, when COVID-19 changed our, the way we led our lives, I returned to UNT to work toward a Master of Arts in Professional and Technical Communication. I've used my background in writing and editing to explore career options in several fields. I spent about two decades in newspapers. I also worked at two academic publishers, at a professional services firm, at academic libraries, and at state agencies. My career has been an exercise in resiliency. Two of my newspapers closed, causing me to pivot into corporate communication and then technical communication. If there's a common thread that has defined my career path, it is my commitment to end users, the audiences who are the ultimate consumers of the information we produce. I've worked at MD Anderson for about 15 years in total. I've worked in three divisions, public affairs, academic affairs, and philanthropy. One thing I appreciate about working here is the mission. It's easy to support wanting to improve the lives of people with cancer. I'm privileged to work alongside some of the world's top cancer physicians and scientists to help them secure funding for their research. Most importantly, I'm entrusted with sharing the stories of some of the patients we serve. It's an inspiring place to work. MD Anderson has a multi-purpose function as a state agency, degree-granting academic institution, and academic research hospital. In 1971, it was named one of the nation's first three National Cancer Institute designated comprehensive cancer centers. In fiscal year 2022, its 24,000 employees serve more than 175,000 patients. I am based at MD Anderson's main campus in the Texas Medical Center in Houston, Texas. MD Anderson also has locations in the Houston suburbs, across Texas, and as a network partner in hospitals across the United States and around the world. I've worked as a manager and senior level individual contributor in different areas. In addition to writing and editing, I've done photography and design. Since 2018, I've worked in the philanthropy division, first as a proposal writer, then a publication editor, and now as a generalist who focuses on several areas. We connect donors with people and programs that inspire them to support new therapies that offer hope to patients. MD Anderson's main campus encompasses several city blocks across the Texas Medical Center, and we worked in one of the outlying buildings. We routinely walked or shuttled across campus before COVID-19 forced us to rethink the way we work in March 2020. We've been working remotely since then. We attend a lot of Zoom meetings and have in-person gatherings a few times a year. I work in the philanthropy division in the philanthropic engagement area and the donor communications department. My department's primary purpose is to generate revenue by producing research-focused proposals for philanthropic support. These proposals are shared with prospective donors by gift officers who work in another department in our division. My colleagues and I collaborate with gift officers and faculty members who can be physicians or researchers on the strategic direction of proposals and other deliverables that support donor engagement. When I was a journalist, my work might be seen by 800,000 readers. Now much of my work is seen by only one person, but it may be looked at very closely and can result in a gift of thousands or even millions of dollars to the institution. It's important that it be done well. Employees in the donor communications department contribute as writers, editors, designers, and project managers. 
We had 13 employees at one time, but for the past year we have been working with as few as five employees at times. Meanwhile, our workload is expanding as we prepare for a campaign to support MD Anderson's growth and development. We've experienced transitions in leadership at all levels, and my department is currently undergoing organizational changes. I have a new senior director who is serving as my supervisor for this course. I also report to and work closely with my director. I officially have one direct report, but I've unofficially managed the work of others as we work to fill vacancies. Employment is now open to anyone from Texas, which widens our pool of potential applicants. I work as a generalist on the triage team. We're a group of senior level communicators that can pick up different types of projects and run with them. I've always enjoyed working as a generalist because of the variety of work we get to do. It allows me to keep my skills in different areas at least somewhat fresh. MD Anderson has a hierarchical structure with a strong system of protocols. I occupy a specialized niche deep within the organizational structure, but I work up and down the chain of command frequently. To work here, one must get comfortable with managing up without much official authority and owning one's expertise. Just as physicians and researchers know the most effective ways to treat cancer, the people in my department know the most effective ways to present information in a way that resonates with donors. I enjoy getting to work with people in all areas, at all levels, across the institution. I was fortunate that I was able to structure an internship in my current position with help from my UNT technical communication advisor and my work supervisor. My supervisor has been here less than six months, but he is already introducing new ways of working informed by his experience on the East Coast. It has led to some major process improvements. One strength of MD Anderson is that it draws employees from around the world and across the U.S. who provide diverse perspectives. Some of my duties for my internship include creating and refining a project management function for leadership correspondence with donors. I also manage production of print and online deliverables. I manage a team of writers and work with people throughout our division. Our courses at UNT have provided a great foundation in technical communication. I have taken insights to the office from each of the five classes I've completed. Our courses have informed my approach to managing teams, working in collaborative groups, writing for particular audiences, and gaining proficiency in software. In some cases, I've been familiar with the software, but learned techniques to use it more productively. In others, I've had the opportunity to use software for the first time. In a recent class, we got our feet wet with ChatGPT, just as discussions about AI software started occurring at work. I felt prepared to participate because of my UNT experience. The learning I've acquired at UNT has enabled me to polish my skills and remain a relevant contributor. We use several different types of software at work. We recently transitioned from a server-based architecture to Microsoft 365. This enables us to work more effectively and securely in a remote environment. We also use Adobe Creative Cloud. Primarily Acrobat Pro, but also InDesign, the InCopy plugin for InDesign, and Photoshop. Occasionally I use Qualtrics to design, write, and deploy surveys. And of course we also use Zoom and Teams for meetings. Since May of 2023, I've been working to create a project management process for managing the production of executive correspondence. I plan the workflow with input from my senior director and my department's operations manager. I assign projects to one employee and one freelancer and take some projects myself. We are designing the process to be flexible and allow for variations as work requests ebb and flow. A new intake request form built in Smartsheet and integrated into our tracking system aids in managing the workflow and collecting metrics. I work on a variety of projects. I work with a vendor to draft and distribute an email newsletter that is deployed to about 6,000 subscribers. The newsletter once had a much larger subscriber base, but due to organizational transitions, the list was culled to a fraction of its previous membership. My supervisor and I are considering options for continuing the newsletter. I work with subject matter experts to update content on my division's SharePoint Online internal storefront web pages and our WWW external pages. The example shared here is an internal web page. I drafted content for the web page and I updated the page recently to add lists of faculty members using the institutional SharePoint directory, which ensures that their contact information remains current. For the WWW pages, 
I update content and share with subject matter experts to coordinate production in Adobe Experience Manager. The biggest challenge in my department is bandwidth. We are missing one quarter to one half of our staff on any given day while our workload is increasing. We've had to manage expectations and ask for grace on deadlines. Sometimes it means working with others to prioritize the multiple high priority projects that reach our desks each day. Often we need to spend time ascertaining what type of deliverable is needed and plan accordingly. A deliverable that starts as an email may ultimately become a script for a phone call, for instance. We are also learning Microsoft 365, which presents a fairly steep learning curve in some ways. We produce a lot of PDFs, and Microsoft doesn't enable efficient routing because the tools don't work well together. Finally, many of our products are reviewed by as many as two dozen people from multiple teams. We've made efforts to structure levels of reviews to eliminate redundancy. Streamlining the peer review process is the number one thing I would change. By the time a deliverable is routed for reviews, multiple content experts have seen it and approved it, but despite our best efforts, we often receive feedback that focuses on rewriting copy that's already been vetted, which has the potential of introducing rather than reducing errors. We also need to reduce the time it takes to hire employees. Recent policies have added time-consuming steps that sometimes result in excluding the very employees that the policies are intended to benefit. We're reminded frequently to observe work-life balance, but we often receive calls and emails on nights and weekends or have workloads and deadlines that necessitate working extra hours. MD Anderson has also structured their benefits to acknowledge that career paths are more fluid than in the past. That helps some employees, but not others. There are also things I would not change that drew me back after I left for a while and worked at other state institutions. As I said earlier, MD Anderson's mission is inspiring, and it's a privilege to work alongside patients and employees working to end cancer. My department and division have brought in talented, collaborative, positive team members who are a joy to work with. We also have relatively good benefits compared with other hospitals in the Texas Medical Center. When I returned to MD Anderson in 2016, I didn't expect that I would get to have another benefit, working remotely. But many employees were already working on a hybrid schedule one or two days a week. After COVID, about 40% of the institution started working remotely full time. Our leadership was visionary in recognizing the benefits from a business standpoint. These are a few of the takeaways that I've learned in class and at work. I'm a recovering perfectionist and have increasingly given myself permission to let projects go when I've done all I can do. Working remotely has changed the way we approach work-life balance, and I'm working on that too. My aspirations for the future include taking more courses at UNT and graduating with my MA in professional and technical communication. I'm fairly far along in my career, and I plan to continue working in my current position or in something similar where I can use the skills I've learned here. I also hope to start teaching undergraduate students in technical communication. I'm interested in giving back and I'm at a point where I'm ready to explore that. Thank you for viewing my presentation. I love to talk shop. Feel free to contact me if I can answer any questions.